To immediately answer the most asked question about devil fruits in history, yes, they do affect your genitals. Meaning that Luffy can stretch his, Robin can spawn hers, Apu can play his like a fancy instrument, and Whitebeard Savage Tsunami Sausage can quite literally destroy the world. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today is all about fruit. Fancy yet horrendous tasting fruit, which with a single bite can grant you glorious superpowers, ranging anywhere from becoming a literal lightning god, all the way to becoming a prone leather jacket. Devil fruit's a pretty high risk, high reward like that. You never know what you're getting yourself into or what kind of bizarre powers you'll face from other fruit consumers, which is one of the aspects that tends to make One Piece so endlessly fascinating to me because the possibilities of these fruits are nigh on infinite, which of course complicates the entire topic quite a bit more because it's not as simple as just numbing on some sort of magical produce. There is a lot to know about devil fruits and a ton of misconceptions regarding how they work, all of which we are going to outline here today. And to begin, we are going to start with a quick round of fruit or false, a very simple mini game, the rules of which are as follows. I am going to ask you a true or false question regarding devil fruits and you are going to answer. Should you answer incorrectly, then your bitter fruity punishment will be to subscribe to the Grand Line Review, which will also result in consistent injections of One Piece culture administered straight into your YouTube feed. And if you do guess correctly, then you shall be rewarded with a devil fruit salad. But here is our question. True or false, within One Piece, devil fruits have been referred to on at least one occasion as Diablo blue fruits? Very simple question, so please do select your choice now, true or false? And we shall reveal the answer in three, two, one, and bam, it's it's actually true. They were called Diablo fruits in a filler arc by a luchador named Colt from the Amigo Pirates, which, you know, I guess at least his name isn't Tacos. That would be, well, that would be so much more worse. But if you guess false, then you now know the thing to do, and please do say hi in the comments below if you are a new member of the Grand Fleet. Welcome. So what are devil fruits? Well, essentially they are objects imbued with a mysterious power, which is acquired by the consumer upon eating them. And this is achieved through a scientific marvel whereby the devil fruit substance is able to manipulate the lineage factor or bloodline elements of the consumer, which whatever you want to call it is basically the One Piece world explanation for DNA. Completely reshaping an organism on a molecular level, thus resulting in all sorts of weird and crazy shenaniganry. And the primary effect that each fruit grants is unique to the fruit itself. However, the one thing they all have in common is taking away the consumer's ability to swim. When submerged in any type of water to a certain level, a devil fruit user will be rendered prone. And in the worst case scenario, they will likely sink and drown, which is pretty bad in a world consisting almost exclusively of small islands and lots and lots of water. And the common belief is that these devil fruits were created by the literal sea devil. And that eating one of these fruits will leave you cursed with this affliction because the sea, for personal reasons, does not like the sea devil. With that said, this is but a rumor that has developed as a result of the average person knowing practically nothing about devil fruits. In fact, due to their extreme rarity, in the vast majority of the world, people don't even believe that these fruits exist at all. But they most certainly do and they taste infamously foul. Legend says that tasting a devil fruit is akin to the taste of rimming the sea devil himself. Now, once again, I must emphasize that this is just a rumor, but it's something to keep in mind. And provided you're okay with that idea, upon consuming a devil fruit, you will be granted a power from one of these three broadly defined categories, being Paramecia, Zoan, or Logia. And to begin with, the Paramecia class, these are by far the most common brand and currently make up roughly 60% of all known devil fruits in One Piece. And due to their sheer volume and range, they are also the most difficult to concisely define. But a standardly known Paramecia effect would be to permanently alter the body of a fruit eater into a different substance, which is what we see with our protagonist, Monkey D. Luffy. He ate a Paramecia type fruit that permanently transformed his body into rubber, so good on him. Although other Paramecia fruits offer their user the option to transform either their whole body or parts of their body into a specific substance, such as Dar's Bones, who can selectively morph himself into sharp metal bladies. Meanwhile, another common Paramecia effect is the ability to generate a substance, like say Califer of CP9, who is able to conjure bubbles, or the far more flamboyant Don Quixote Dolphamingo, who can generate absurdly powerful strings. And these generation style Paramecias do go quite far into the left field though, such as Foxy, who can create a fictional substance known as Norma Photons, which slow down anything they come into contact with for 30 seconds. Environmental and physical manipulation also comes into play quite frequently, Frequently, with a good example being Bluno, who can create doors in anyone or anything, or Jola, who can transform anyone or anything she wishes into highly subjective modern art. But the key thing to remember about the Paramecia class is that it very much serves as a bit of a dumping ground for all of the strange and weird powers that don't fit into either one of the other two classes. These powers can get strangely specific and quite abstract, but in addition to that, there is also one official subclass known as a special Paramecia. Currently, there is only one known fruit that has been officially 
officially classified as a special paramecia, which is the Mochi Mochi no Mi held by Charlotte Katakuri. And it falls into this category because it grants Katakuri two basic paramecia functions, being the ability to generate Mochi as well as to turn his body into Mochi, whereas a more standard paramecia would only be able to do one or the other. Although I do have to point out that this subclass may or may not exist entirely due to a narrative retcon, as the Mochi Mochi no Mi was originally referred to as a Logia in the manga, but regardless of how it happened, it is now officially a special paramecia. Now at this stage, we've also heard a couple of devil fruit names, and it would be important to point out that these fruits are generally named according to Japanese onomatopoeia, such as say the Barabara no Mi, which is named after the oddly specific Barabara sound, meaning something disconnecting or dispersing. Although there are cases where the fruits have far more specific and even literal names, most of which are confined to our next class being the Zoan types. Now the Zoan fruits are quite nice and basic in theory, because they allow their users to transform into a different species of creature, although not permanently as some Paramecia powers do dictate. Instead, a Zoan user typically has the option to transform either into that different creature or a hybrid form incorporating that creature. A good example would be Rob Lucci. He consumed the Neko Neko no Mi model leopard, which allows him to transform obviously into a leopard or a leopard human hybrid. And there is a Zoan fruit for seemingly every species imaginable, such as very basic bugs, small herbivores, or even larger real life carnivores. Where the Zoan class becomes quite fascinating though is with its higher tier subclasses, such as the very rare ancient Zoans, which allow their users to transform into extinct creatures. And just as a side note, currently every ancient Zoan user that we know of has been a member of the Beast Pirates, who have shown all sorts of fun dinosaur things, such as a mammoth, a Brachiosaurus, and even a Pteranodon. In addition to being cool dino bros, ancient Zoans are also typically far more powerful than their regular Zoan counterparts. However, there is an even higher tier at play here known as mythical Zoans. This brand of fruit is extraordinarily rare, quite possibly the rarest single subclass in the series, and they give their consumers the ability to transform into a mythical creature that may or may not have ever existed. At the time of this recording, there are only five canon mythical Zoan users who can transform into a phoenix, a dragon, an eight-headed snakeo, a nine-tailed fox, and a big old golden Buddha respectively. Mythical Zoans also tend to come with bonus supernatural abilities attributed to the mythical creature in question, such as the healing flames of a phoenix. And as a result, these fruits are some of the most powerful to consume right out of the box. Arguably on par with our third class being the Logia types, which are very simply defined by giving their users the ability to conjure, manipulate, or become an element. So we're talking the power to become fire, ice, light, or even the less fleeting elements like say magma and the unappealing swamp. For much of One Piece, Logias have held an indisputable mantle as being the most powerful class of Devil Fruit because to the lower level combatants, they make their users nigh on invincible. In fact, without Haki or the element's natural counter, it is legitimately impossible to inflict damage on a Logia user in most cases due to their sheer intangibility. Although it should be said that Logias are not quite as fearsome as they once were due to the advent of Armament Haki, which acts as something of a hard counter to Logia-based powers. Even so, they are not to be taken lightly, even the light fruit, and they are primarily held by the world's strongest combatants, and Karabo. There is also Karabo. And whilst you might think that's it for Devil Fruit classification, there is actually a fourth category that has emerged relatively recently in the grand scheme of One Piece, which are artificial Devil Fruits. These refer to Devil Fruits that were constructed via groundbreaking scientific advancements. However, it should be said that the only class of fruit that has managed to be produced in this manner are the Zoan type. And to call these artificial creations a uh, success, well, success is subjective, I suppose. The best example we have would currently be Dr. Vegapunk's Devil Fruit, which was consumed by Kozuki Momonosuke, allowing him to become a version of Kaido's Eastern Dragon form. Although for currently unknown reasons, this fruit was deemed a failure by Dr. Vegapunk, which is odd because I would say it's far more of a success than our second brand of artificial devil fruits being the sinister smile types. These were developed under the watchful yet maddening eyes of Caesar Clown, and they produce effects of uh, questionable benefits. One might even call them detriments. Smile fruits essentially afflict their consumers with an aspect of an animal, or even a living tumor-like growth of a creature spawning from their unfortunate bodies. Some smile fruits are definitely better than others, but they are a very poor substitute to actual devil fruits, and that's if they work to begin with, which in 90% of cases they do not, and instead they leave the user cursed, being unable to express any kind of emotion except for joy for the remainder of their lives, hence the name Smile. Now, speaking of artificial devil fruits, this is always quite a tricky area to go into because there is an argument that potentially all devil fruits are artificial and not some sort of gift or curse granted by uh, nature. And this is due to the fact that some fruits are seemingly impossible to have naturally developed, such as Scratch Manipu's Paramecia fruit, which allows him to transform his body into complex musical instruments, or similarly, Baby 5's Buki 
Kabuki no Mi, which allows her to transform her body into very complex weaponry. And furthermore, it's also far from impossible to augment devil fruits once consumed. Caesar Clown would be a prime example of that, having altered his gas low gear fruit to be far more deadly, or even better, Tony Tony Chopper, whose medical research has allowed him to access extra zoan transformations with his fruit. Although one does not need to be a proficient scientist to evolve fruit capabilities, and inbuilt into all of the classical models is the concept of awakening, a sort of unlocking of an extra power or new method to use a fruit ability. The easy example to cite would be in the zoan class, where an awakened zoan user will allow them to assume these giant chunk forms, which come packed with greater strength, speed, durability, and recovery rates, although they do come with an increased risk of animal instinct putting pressure on the user and thus potentially losing themselves. In the world of Paramecias, we've seen two awakenings thus far, which both seem to stem from the generation style fruits, allowing the users to transform parts of their environment into their respective substances. However, at the time of this recording, no other sub-brand of Paramecia has been seen achieving an awakening. And that only becomes worse for Logia fruits, which also do not have a confirmed mechanism of awakening. Although there are plenty of theories out there which state that we may very well have already seen the results of Logia awakenings. And for posterity's sake, we also have no recorded awakenings within the mythical or ancient Zoan fruit users, indicating that it either may be far more difficult to do so, or that they're just so rare that the narrative opportunity to show one off hasn't quite popped up yet. Now, one fascinating thing that we have not discussed as of yet is the fact that these fruit abilities do outlast their users. Should the user of a devil fruit do what is seemingly impossible in one piece and die, the actual power would then be reincarnated into another existing fruit, a normal fruit that is, which then becomes not normal. And this means that we have several examples of abilities in the series that have had multiple users, such as Ace and Saba with the Mera Mera no Mi, or Higurashi and Bon Clay with the Mane Mane no Mi. Although interestingly, there may be a mechanism to pass on power without it being reincarnated into a fruit vessel, a sort of cutting out of the middleman. And there is one recorded instance in the series of a character inheriting a devil fruit ability after quite literally eating the former user, or at least that's how it's been implied. However, this is counter to a question posed to Oda in an SBS segment, where a reader asked if he could acquire Luffy's Goma Goma no Mi powers by eating Luffy himself. Oda went on to answer no, and that he would likely receive food poisoning instead. But this was very, very early in the series, and it's hard to know how seriously to take this comment. Some more fun facts about devil fruits. Within the One Piece world, there does exist a devil fruit encyclopedia, which apparently details the names and powers of every devil fruit in existence, bar the artificial ones, assumedly. With that said, there are only a few illustrations, so even if you were familiar with this book, you would still likely have no idea what fruit you were eating in most cases. Whilst no two devil fruit abilities are the same, there do exist powers that are considered direct superiors to others. The most obvious example being the Kilo Kilo no Mi and the Ton Ton no Mi, which allow their users to change their weight via kilo or ton respectively. And that is literally the only difference. Meanwhile, even with all of our fancy class definitions, every now and then a fruit does pop up that simply cannot be classified, such as the Tama Tama no Mi, which allows its user to evolve from an egg to a chick and then a chicken, but is clearly not a standard zoan and incorporates common features of both the Paramecia and Logia class fruits as well. And now one of the most commonly asked question regarding devil fruits ever, what happens if two people consume the same fruit? Well, this was answered in the Ace novels where both Ace and Master Juice ate the Mera Mera no Mi. However, because Ace got the first bite, he was the one to receive the cool fire powers, whilst Juice was left with nothing except a foul, foul meal. But if you'd like to explore Devil Fruits a bit more, then please do check out this video examining the top 20 best Devil Fruit users in the series, proven by glorious pseudoscience. So I look forward to seeing you there.